By the grace of Christ, my dear brethren, let us read from the letter from the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, who is true, who has the keys of David, and he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie, Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar and the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church of La the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. With me. <clears throat> to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Two churches with a different spirit. With one spirit in the Church of Philadelphia, of obedience, of submission, and a different spirit in the Church of Laodicea. But what matters is what our Lord Jesus Christ said to Peter when he asked him, what do people say that I, the Son of Man, am? And after they said what they hear, in the end Peter said, but, but you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And upon this testimony of his, the Lord answered, and he said, Blessed are you, Simon, for what you say was not revealed to you by man, but my Father who is in heaven. And the important thing, I say to you, that you are Peter. He was Simon, which means chaff. But with this testimony, the complete transformation begins. From wheat and chaff, I'm going to call you stone now. You are Peter. And upon this Peter of your testimony, I, Christ, will build my church. The basic and crucial point is the church is built by Christ. And the church is not these, the structure. 
The church is every one of us individually. The church is the body of Christ. And every one of us is a member of the body of Christ. And every one of us, Christ builds us. I will build the church. The result being that when I build my church, then the gates of Hades will never prevail against it. There are the gates of Hades that are mighty. But when you are built by Christ, nothing can prevail against you. But the church is the house of the living God, is the pillar and the foundation of the truth. If it is the pillar and foundation of the truth, then it is the church of God that it, the Christ is building. If it is not a pillar and foundation of the truth of the gospel, then it is a congregation of men in vain, a useless assembly that reads, leads to perdition. What is this thing that differentiates the true church from a fake church? that says that it's a church, but unfortunately is not. The truth of the gospel, the word of God. What is this thing that brought Caleb into the land and left Moses out of the land? Obedience to the word of God. Speak to the stone. No, he struck it. To the rock, sorry. Caleb, enter. The land of promise is yours. They see us as the locusts. They're, they're strong. They're giants. That's what the 10 said. Why? Because they did not trust. They did not believe. They did not base their life in the truth of the gospel, the word of God. Where do you base your life? That is the question. What is your support? What is the pillar and foundation for you? Is it the truth? The gates of Hades will not prevail against you. No matter what happens, everything will fall apart around you. Everything will be moved because they are shakable. Only the word of God abides forever. Only those who trust in the Word of God will not be put to shame. It is written, and the Bible cannot be broken. It does not depend on the ability of man, the sufficiency of men, the might, the cleverness of man, the devotion. It does not depend on anything of this. It depends on the obedience of the Word of God, whether you will follow Christ precisely. Not the way that you think, nor the way that they say to you, or the way that others say, but as the Gospel of Jesus Christ says, exactly, not as foolish, but as a wise person who fears the Lord. It is not easy for you to cross through the Jordan and to partake in the rapture. If you are not based on the Word of God exactly. If you are based exactly on the Word of God, like Caleb, then it is not easy, but it is a sure thing because you'll find grace by God. And you will find yourself to the end with a double portion of the Holy Spirit. You will go from might to might because the Lord will add to you every day those who are being saved to the church, to His church, which is the pillar and foundation of the truth. Church of Philadelphia, 
the church regarding which the Apostle Paul, the Word of God, says in his letter to the Ephesians, the church of the latter days. He says that Christ loved the church. He loved the church. And he gave himself up for her so that he may sanctify her by washing her in the washing of water through the Word of God. So in the end, he may present her to himself, a glorious church, without a spot or wrinkle or any of the sort, but so that she may be holy and blameless. This is the work of Christ. The work that Christ has taken in his hands for the latter days for the last apostolic church that will be glorious, holy, without a spot or wrinkle or any of the sort, blameless. Why? Because Christ has loved her. And why did Christ love her? Because she loved Christ. And he who has my commands and keeps them, Christ says, he is the one who loves me. It is a relationship not of, of Moses with God, of doubt in the end, but a relationship of confidence, of might, of love, <coughs> of a sound mind, a relationship of might and faith and of the Holy Spirit, a relationship that is unique, that is not earthly, but it is heavenly because it is fulfilled by God the Father himself through Jesus Christ with the power of the Holy Spirit to the insignificant man. And if I, the foolish man, decide, uh, de dare to call call uh, Caleb insignificant, what must I describe myself and you? We are wretched, we're vile, we're nothing, we're less than zero. None of us is worthy of his word, but praise be to God, because Christ is among us, and he transforms us from wheat into stones. Because we have believed that Jesus of Nazareth is the truth, the way, and the life. We believed with all our heart, and this is a gift of God. By grace we believed, by grace we were saved, by grace we stand, by grace we worship God pleasant, pleasantly with reverence and godliness. Everything in our life is by grace because we are useless. We are wretched, vile people. We are nothing. None of us is worthy of his word. Let none of us believe that I'm a bit better than the next. He's worse. He's lost. He's lost. Esteem others superior than yourself. Esteem others higher than yourself. That is the will of God. So a church whereas the most weak with understanding and acknowledgement of its weakness. But Philadelphia is the church upon which God has turned his eyes because she is weak. She doesn't have a work to present. All the rest of the churches have works to present. <coughs> but the Lord Jesus Christ has something against them. This is a church that has nothing great to show. People who are insignificant, who are humble, with understanding of their weakness, from the pastor to all the members of the church. Make us so, Lord Jesus. Make it so that we may understand that we have to boast in our weaknesses so that the power of God may dwell among us. Make it so, Lord Jesus, please. Let us understand that only when we are weak, and we are, then God is mighty among us. In your life, my brother, if you want God to be strong in your life, say, I am weak. Because this is the truth. As the church of love of the brethren, 
Love for the brethren said, the church of Philadelphia, where one loves the other, in true love, not his own, but by grace, for even the love of God is poured into our hearts by the other spirit, the Holy Spirit. He says, I know your works. God doesn't have anything significant to show, doesn't dare to say something. I know your works. But I, to you, have set an open door before you that is oh, powerful and active. Many will oppose you, but it doesn't matter. I have set before you who are weak as a very small strength. If, my brother, you want the gate to open, you know what it means for Christ to open a great open door that is active, that no one will be able to shut that is standing before your feet, you can walk through, and the door of Christ, of the glory of God, and of the power of the Holy Spirit is open to you. Become weak then, as you truly are. Understand this thing. Believe it. Let this, let this not happen to us like Moses. Now we'll bring forth water for you. Who are you, brother, to bring forth water? What are you? Water, living water, comes only from the fountains of living waters, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord. How nice is it for us to enjoy our weakness and to boast in our weakness and God to be glorified in our weakness. I set before you an open door in your weakness. But why? Because like Caleb, you obeyed my word even if he was weak. Can't be. Even if you were weak. Because you have kept my word and have not denied my name. This is the church of God. The pillar and foundation of the truth. There, where the truth is supported and established, you have kept my word and not denied my name. And now with an open door, listen to what I will do. And there is the synagogue of Satan where they say that they're Jews, but they're not, and they lie. There are those who say that they're the church of God, but they're not, because they're the pillar and foundation of the truth. They lie. And they lie because they do not believe in the gospel of Christ, because they have added thousand and two different traditions and doctrines and opinions that oppose the gospel of Christ. They lie. They lie because they do not accept the truth of the gospel. But they transform the truth into a lie. But all of them, I love them. I love them all. Not less than you. I love them possibly more than you. <laughs> Whom did God love more? Peter, who immediately received Christ, or Paul, who was a persecutor of Christ. I say, who do you think more? So I dare say it. I won't say it. <laughs> he loved them both the same. He loved them both equally. A lot. Very much. Peter, from a fisherman, a, ca a catcher of fish to a catcher of men. And P Paul, from a persecutor of the church, he made him the champion of the church. Glory be God. Glory be to God. So those who are in the synagogue of Satan, if only you knew Church of Philadelphia, how much I love them. My attention is turned upon them. 
I settled issues with you, now I have to settle issues with them. And do not believe that I have set an open door before you just for you. But I have set it before you for them. I have left a door there so that when they decide, I will lead them into my church. And then they will bow before me and they will know that I have loved you. He has loved the church. For that reason, he transforms you into holy, perfect, without a spot or wrinkle or any of the sort, into a glorious and unique church that is blameless. This is what they will acknowledge, that I have loved you. Do we understand, my brethren, how important it is for Christ to bear witness that he loves us? with an everlasting love. I have drawn you near with mercy. From the time that you were precious in my eyes, you were glorified. That the house and the temple of the living God are the church, which is the pillar and foundation of the truth. We are not claiming that we are this pillar and foundation of the truth. One thing we do claim, though, is we do want to become a pillar and foundation of the truth. We want to be walking exactly according to the Spirit and not according to our flesh because only to those who walk according to the Spirit is there no condemnation. May God keep us. And what does I walk according to the Spirit mean? I do not walk the way that I like according to the desire of my heart. I do not walk the way that I want according to the desire of my heart. And I do not walk according to, a, to what I think to the arrogance of my spirit, but I walk the way that my Lord Jesus Christ commands and finds pleasure in. And now, be careful, Church of Philadelphia. You have kept my word to persevere. You must keep my word to persevere. And what is the word of God to persevere? It is the word that says, The Lord is not delaying in His promise, as a few consider this to be tardiness, but He's long-suffering with us, because He wants all men to be saved and to come to repentance. He long-suffers for us all who will repent and will return, and He will take us up to you and to the other as well. And the only one who is able to obstruct and to shut, and he doesn't shut though, the door, the open door before us, is us. When we use our logic, we come into the church and say, this is my seat, why did you sit there? Listen to this foolishness. Go further in, because I'm sitting here. Get up from there, I'm, I sit there. Who are you? This man, this woman, was brought here by Christ because he loves them. <clears throat> and he loves them more than you that behave this way. If you do not repent, like Moses, remember, Moses was left outside. Caleb was simple. Moses thought, may God forgive me something happened in him but God gave grace and he kept his eyes open so that when he brought him up to the peak of Haska Mount Nebo, he saw the land of promise by grace but he did not experience it we want to live it my brethren we want to enter and live it so be careful now keep the word of God to persevere, long suffer, show mercy to whom? To everyone. Because only mercy boasts over judgment. 
if you do not show mercy, then the judgment will be, will be without mercy. Of this all people will know that you are my disciples by your love. Don't be too many, don't be teachers, many of you, because you'll find yourself in condemnation. Teacher was the priest and the Levite who saw the wounded person and they ran. But the man of God was the Samaritan who had compassion on the wounded person and saved him. Have compassion, my brother. Offenses will come into the church, scandals. Woe to those who will bring them. Whoever offends one of the least of my brethren, be careful, brother. Be careful of your heart, of your behavior, your words. Whoever offends even the, one of the least of my brethren, it is better for him that a, a millstone is tied around his neck and he's cast into the sea. Woe is him. But blessed is the man. <clears throat> because God is not unjust to reject his, your, wor your wor work of love. How? By serving, having served and serving the saints of the church. As you wash the feet of saints, he has a different spirit, a special spirit, spirit of Caleb, the spirit of God, the servant, not the Lord. It's not that we will bring you out. We will bring water. The Lord will bring water to you and to me. If you do not keep my word to persevere, then neither will I keep you. God forbid, neither will I protect you during the hour of temptation when the calling and the voice of the archangel will be, will be heard, the voice of God. Neither will I, will I keep you from the hour of temptation that's going to come and test and afflict all mankind in the seven-year reign of the Antichrist so that you may enter one it depends on one thing that you have compassion and you do not offend and you do not become angry and you do not become proud in your heart but humbly even more humbly with love and more love with quietness with faith all together we will reach heaven those who are on the outside even and we who are within. Don't forget the beautiful parable of the marriage of the son of the king, that when the time came, he said, come, come, the wedding is taking place, everything is ready. And some of those who were invited already said, I've bought a piece of land. Five pairs of oxen I have bought. I have married a, a wife. Please have me have me uh, on the waiting list. What, aren't you going to come to my son's wedding? We want to be at the wedding of Christ. And we want to be the bride of Christ. <coughs> With uh, great white clothes that are pure. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have because you may lose it. Come, uh, hold on to it. Hold fast so that no one may take your crown. Hold fast to what you have. Hold on to it. What do you have? Do you have Christ? Do you have everlasting life? Do you have the grace of God? The mercy of God? Your seat in the church, which is the throne of God. Hold fast to what you have. Because if you don't hold on to it carefully, you will lose it. And someone else will take your crown. May God keep us all. And this is so contrary to the church of Laodicea who lost their, their crown. But God is merciful again. He says, I'm rich. I have need of no one. God has blessed me very much. Look around to see what I've got. What is it that you have that you have not received, my poor man? Why do you boast for something that you received? Is it yours? The one who gives is the one who takes. For that reason, 
with his with Christ's long suffering, he says, "Listen, are you wealthy? You're wealthy, but you know what will follow? I will vomit you out. God forbid. Are you blessed? Are you rich? If you do not repent, I will vomit you out. I you know what I will vomit you out means. A terrible way of Christ bringing you out of his body. A disgusting way. This is your future. I will vomit you out, he says. Why? Because you're neither warm nor cold. You're lukewarm. And you think that you're something. You think that you're rich and blessed. But you don't know that you've lost everything. You've lost everything because in reality... You are miserable and, and blind and poor and naked. For that reason, repent. Repent and ask for me to give you gold that, is, that has been tested by fire, which is the word of God, the truth of the gospel. Give me, let me give you my word. Don't use your word. And then I will give you white garments shiny white garments which is your salvation and listen to me I'm knocking on your door and I'm waiting to see who will hear me and if somebody hears me and opens the door to me I will come in and I'll become his friend I will dine with him and he will dine with me but you have to overcome only he who overcomes I will make him sit on the throne of my father where I will go in. Overcome what? Your heart. First of all, the world, the desires. That you overcome your pride. That you overcome the things that take you far away from God. And the way for you to overcome these things is humble yourself, brother, and you'll find grace. And when you do find grace, you won't be the one who will make that war. Christ will make the war. And you will be always victorious. Not only victorious, but the Apostle Paul cries out and says, Blessed be the name of the Father of Jesus Christ, who makes us always triumph. And he makes us a sweet aroma of Christ in all our surroundings. This is the triumph. That Christ has a sweet scent from you. Amen.